Good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So having a quick look at the US markets, you can see that we're slowly drifting lower as news filters down about crude oil's 6% drop overnight down to about $37 and change as big concerns over future demand begin to impact the markets with most fingers pointing at China and the lack of growth in that, in that area. So if you couple the uh, growing interest rate um, kind of fuel on uh, the 16th of December and you combine that together with lower growth from China and the in increased output of crude oil. People aren't even buying it even at these incredibly low prices. Um, that's got to send a, a couple of alarm bells ringing and certainly on the equity market front we were lower earlier on yesterday's session um, but we managed to recover some but we're back on the back foot already this morning. So that's where we are on the US 30. Then jumping on to the uh, UK 100, uh, a kind of a, a bleaker picture uh, coming to already towards the end of today's range uh, with 60.73 being the next potential support. On intraday charts, uh, this looks very, very heavy right now. You had a negative, cro negative crossover of the 80% level in the slow stochastic and you've got the MACD crossing the zero line as well. So from a technical perspective, UK 100 looking kind of heavy. Similar picture for Japan 25, bearish engulfing pattern, failure to break through 21 period SMA. Next potential support would be 19,104. Other technicals are uh, slumping downwards, but it's the, uh, the final break of the 80% level in the slow stochastic, uh, which will probably be from a technical pers perspective more keenly watched. Jumping on to dollar yen, dollar yen not doing a huge amount bearish engulfing pattern again, failure to break up that much higher. Uh, people will be buying the yen as a safe haven if equities begin to sell off. We do have that 21 period SMA that might provide short term potential support. The other technicals are relatively neutral. You can just see here from uh, from dollar yen's perspective that uh, around about 123 and change, that's being a short term potential resistance uh, since November. So let's look at West Texas crude. So uh, very strong uh, kind of technical breakout we had yesterday, followed through, must have hit a whole bunch of stops on the way down, uh, broke below $37, but as testament to, uh, to the sell-off there, we haven't actually seen an extended move towards $35.30, .30, which is a 2009 low, um, but considering we've broken below, matter fact, let me just draw this on perhaps a little bit more accurately, that's kind of where the support level actually is. Uh, which got broken last night. Now, we've not quite had that retracement yet. Uh, let's have a look at on a four hour perspective. So even, let's go on a one hour, see that a bit more clearly. So you can just see it's just kind of waving, but it's kind of waving, but it's already coming off. Uh, you can see the tip of this candle right here. It's it tried to break higher and got pushed back down again. And from my entry line chart, it doesn't look really that strong or powerful right now either. So then looking at gold, I uh, had a bit of a reversal yesterday as we talked about. It was a very unusual move for it to break so much higher, even the strength of the US dollar and uh, a potential hike in interest rates. It's completely reversed course, not completely, but it's, it was on the wrong side of potential support at 1,072. It's had a brief rally this morning. It's ticking up ever so slightly on the, on the interday charts, but could be capped by that 21 period SMA as well. So finishing up with euro dollar and GBP USD. So euro dollar had a bounce of one spot zero eight nineteen. Uh, not really actually doing a huge amount after that. Um, it, this would be quite a strong technical signal. The fact that it's rejected moving lower. Uh, it didn't make up all of its uh, its losses for the day, but uh, the tip of the candle today. We are making a series of lower highs. So you got a high, lower high, lower high, lower high. Um, we might begin to consolidate around about 1.08. Because obviously the 16th isn't that far away. That's the next FOMC uh, session where there'll be a decision made on rates. Uh, and that's uh, Wednesday, the 16th of December. It's going to be fairly important for most traders out there. GBP USD drifting towards 1.5027. So it'll be quite good to, uh, to uh, see if we get a bounce off that level or not. Uh, obviously, with the FOMC next week, that, that, that could be something that could cause it to punch out. The FOMC is pretty much 80% priced in, or an 80% chance that will happen. So they do raise rates. I wouldn't expect the dollar to have a, an unbelievable catapult forward, but if they don't raise rates, 
uh, that's when you might see some more exciting movement. So looking at the Chinese data, um, uh, so exports year on year was worse than expected and imports uh, was not as bad as expected. Trade balance came in uh, better than expected, um, which is actually not so bad. GDP for Eurozone is due today at 10 a.m. UK time. And if we fast forward to Wednesday, a whole host of Japanese and Chinese data, followed by crude oil inventories, more uh, Chinese data. And then on Thursday, more Japanese data, interest rate announcement from the Bank of England. And you also have uh, employment data from the US as well. So guys, keep your eye on the chart forum. Make insights part of your layout going forward. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.